Weeds, a prankster, buys his girlfriend, Mary Beth, a pair of super spec glasses as part of his April Fool's Day collection. Once she puts on the glasses, strange figures appear and can't be explained. This is Ryan. And this is Ashley. And this is Ruining Our Childhood Presents Are, Are We, we still, still Afraid, afraid of, of the Dark? dark? Welcome oh, back. Question. Hi, guys. It's been a minute. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's been a minute for this particular podcast, not if you are a Ruining Our Childhood listener. Mm-hmm. We've been putting out episodes. It's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's since December. I, I just say, looked it up. Nine months. Yeah, for sure. Took a little break. I don't have my notes up. We recharged. Yeah. And now we're back. Watching the 1990s classic, childhood classic. (laughs) Are you afraid of the dark? Are you? Oh, my computer's frozen. Ah, Mine was doing that too. We're back for another great season. Hopefully it won't take a whole year to do another season of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Or that's not the name of this podcast. (laughs) Are we still afraid of the dark? Yeah. Where we rewatch episodes of Are You For the Dark and decide if they're still good? Uh, amazing? Scary? Yeah. Creepy? I think I realized from just rewatching this last episode how annoying the Midnight Society people are. <laughs> and I could just do without them. Aw. Like, just give me a quick introduction. That's it. I think some of them are more annoying than others, Mm -hmm. but... Gary's a son of a bitch. Don't talk about Kiki like that. Or our particular favorite... Betty Ann. Betty Ann. Sorry, Mary Beth is who's in this episode. Yes, she's a character in The Tale of the Super Specs, which is... I don't know if we said that's the name of the episode we are rewatching today. Yeah. Or we just rewatched. Yes, we've already rewatched it. Do you want to hit us with our first category? Our first category is, well, hello there. Well, hello there. Where we talk about any famous or recognizable actors or actresses that we didn't know were in the episode. And everyone we don't know is in this episode, because I don't remember any of the people ever. Yeah. I mean, I'm waiting for some amazing actor cameos, but there was one where... A legit actor, still acts, has been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Uh, plays the main character of Weeds. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Eugene Bird, and he's been in True Blood, Arrow, mm-hmm. Bones, among a lot of other things. And on those shows, he was on, especially on Bones, I think he was on 37 yeah. episodes. So it's not like he was just in one. Yeah, he worked in the lab. He was a doctor with yeah. uh, the main characters, which I can't remember. Bones in Sealy Booth. Okay. Yeah. Was that her name, Bones? I don't know. I don't know if that's that's... just what uh, David Boreanaz called him. (sighs) And I think he was in Rogue One. Yes. The Star Wars movie. He was. Mm -hmm. The other people in the episode looked familiar to me, but then they weren't. The main female in the episode's name was Mary Beth, and she was played by... (laughs) (laughs) Gradening... Levid Amaro. Amiro. 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 And the only thing she was in was another 1990s classic TV show, The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu. Nice. Yeah. But she was only on like one episode. Oh. Yeah. Sad. But I, I did that watch show. that show. Yeah. Good times. I remember when that show was being made, that was when we would go to Florida a lot and we would always take the Nickelodeon tour that they had at Universal. Uh huh. And that was when they were creating shelby woo and they had originally cast a blonde haired girl to play her and they (laughs) they tested it and everyone was like she looks just like melissa joan hart from clarissa explains her name shelby woo yes and they cast a white a white girl with blonde hair and then they recast her with the other person that actually because they're like she looks different than also someone that maybe would have that name Yes. Yeah. Somebody that might, you know, be an 
a- Asian descent. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, it's not surprising. No, it's not. Especially for the 90s, but it's just... Why? Yeah. Anyway, the next person was uh, Sardo. Yes. Did I say it right? Because he corrects every single person in the episode. It's pronounced Sardo. Yeah. Um, he plays basically the magic shop owner, mm-hmm. and he's played by Richard Dumont. I didn't really notice anything else that he was in that we'd seen. He does seem to do a lot of voice acting for video games, including SS. <laughs> One more time. Assassin's Creed Mm -hmm. and Splinter Cell. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Assassin's. Assassin's. And it seemed like he did a lot of uh, shows that had French titles. I don't know if he maybe works up in Montreal or if he worked in France. That would make sense. There was a friend of Weeds that he played basketball with, and I don't even know what that kid's name was. Me neither. He was in two scenes. The only other one I had was... When they would put on the sunglasses, or not sunglasses, sorry, the super specs. Yeah. Uh, Mary Beth would see this dark lady, and that was played by Rachel Gallant, and she was actually on The Day After After Tomorrow, and if you listen to our movie podcast, that had recently lost a poll. Yeah. Should be coming up on a future episode, and she was also on Being Human. Oh, okay. So, yeah. But that was the last one I had. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, none of the other people there was a very small cast where i th- i feel like that's kind of a thing that that happens in a lot of these episodes it's very small mm-hmm. there's not a lot of people to discuss so yeah like um, you said there's some characters where they you, you don't you're not even sure of their names yeah like there's a kid that played with basketball there's mary best friend yeah they're in one scene exactly there's yeah. a girl that we'll talk about later um <laughs> you want to move on yes the next category is called let's get digging where we talk about the plot and the plot holes of this episode. And we also t- say our funniest and cringiest moments, our picks. Mm-hmm. What did you think about the plot? I think the part about going to a joke shop and maybe buying something that you think's going to be magical. Yeah. That I could see kids doing. Cause, yeah, for sure. You know, there was a joke shop in our hometown and we went there a few times and... I was always excited to buy invisible ink and stuff like that. Yeah. But the fact that, like, Weeds is, like, reading, like, books on how to perform voodoo on people. Just casually at school. (laughs) Yeah. Like, he's sitting under a tree. A little out there. He's obviously written as the type that he's a prankster. Everybody in school knows that April Fool's coming up. Weeds got a big plan. (laughs) And, but I just like how at one point he's sprinkling this dust that he bought at a magic shop which even if it wasn't magic it's probably not supposed to be consumed yes and he sprinkles it in this girl's yogurt yes and i'm like just casually poisoning his classmates he should, and he like poured it on his basketball yeah i'm like for all you know that guy sold you a bag of cocaine kid i that is a plot hole i do not believe that that nerdy ass kid that is his friend is better at basketball <laughs> than he is there, there's just no way no no he was, kid... he was playing basketball in like boots jeans and a t-shirt that was tucked in yes he looks like the nerdiest kid uh, raindrops yeah oh, he was uh that was pretty funny did you have any plot holes i would think once you've these curse glasses and right. your friend when she puts them on is seeing these shadowy figures that were creepy like, you would make an attempt to destroy him, which, when they cut to the Midnight Society, one of the kids in the Midnight Society was like, why don't they throw uh, throw him down the garbage disposal or flush him down the toilet? And I was thinking, same thing. Why aren't you burning these? Yeah. Smashing them. Do something. Because whenever she would throw them, up, throw them in the trash, they would just follow Reappear, her. Or yeah. she even, at one point, takes them back to the joke shop. Yeah. And they reappear. I, the thing, I that didn't make sense to me, but... I guess the only thing, and I think one of the people from the Midnight Society said was, like, why does she keep putting them on? (laughs) Because, like, they don't know if the people are real. And it's a very uh, vague thing until the very end Mm -hmm. when they kind of explain what those people are. But they're just, you know, people dressed literally all in black, head to toe, no, like, masks or anything. Like, their faces are covered. Yeah. But I'm like, why do you keep putting them on? That's a good point. Because they're not there. Yeah. There's no rule that says you have to put them on. Yeah. 
What was your funniest? It was a line that is not intended to be funny, but Mary Beth asks Weeds, we've been seeing each other for a while now, and his reply is, yes, two weeks. Yeah. No, I put that as my funniest part, too, because he said it, so he's like, yeah, two whole weeks. But I'm like, I guess if you're like 15 years old, I don't know how old they're supposed to be, 14, 15, two weeks is a very long time. It is. But... As adults, we're like, me and you have been together almost 14 years. That's a while. Two weeks? No. Uh, Good times. To be a child again. Uh, Oh, man. (sighs) I just love the, yeah, (laughs) two weeks. Two whole weeks. (laughs) Um, What was your cringiest part? It happened twice. Oh, my God. It's the same. I have Uh, the same. Same. Okay. Well, you, I kind of took the last one. You take this I'm one. I mean, guessing it's, it. it's the same. Yeah. But at the very beginning of the episode, Gary and Kristen, who mm-hmm. is played by Rachel Blanchard, mm-hmm. the Midnight Society kids, they're at a joke shop, which I think is owned by Gary's dad. Yes. I think he said. Because he was kind of working there. Yeah. And they're playing around with the extra glasses, the super specs, if you will. Mm-hmm. And he puts them on and he looks at looks up and down at Kristen and is like, wowza. Yeah. And I was like, creep. Such a creep. And then, and then they do it again in the actual story, which makes sense because Gary is telling the story. Mm-hmm. So he's drawing from real life. It was just funny because, like we said, it's the first scene of the episode. And then when Gary starts telling the story, uh-huh. it's the first scene in that story. So these scenes are about three minutes apart in the episode yeah. where it's basically the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. I can't say that if I was in their situation, I wouldn't have done the same thing you wouldn't at that age. Yowza. Put them on and look over and go, yowza. And then get slugged uh, in the face by yeah. whoever I'm with. If if you're with me, I would have punched you in the face. <laughs> I will say a close second is they're kind of talking some shit about how Gary hasn't scared them a while in his stories. Yeah. And when he walks up, Kiki turns and almost walks right into him Uh uh-huh and she was like you scared me and it was so cheesy and i'm like well you just said he hadn't scared you in a while and boom he scared you scared you i also like how they say that and it's literally the sixth episode yeah yeah (laughs) and i think he's told a couple stories already and they were some good ones the leader yeah but yeah good times do you want to move on yes our next category is woo woo, <laughs> which just sounds like there's an ambulance coming for you. We got a red flag alert. What were the signs that these kids are about to just be statistics in a ghost story? Yeah, there and, were a couple. Yeah, what what did you have? Because weeds never really fully understood that the powder that he was using was actually working Mm -hmm. because when he did in the yogurt nothing happened and then he walked away and the minute he walked away the girl's voice changed Mm -hmm. you know the person that he poisoned (laughs) essentially (laughs) and then with the basketball he ignored the fact that it went in the second time yeah which is not i mean that could happen Mm -hmm. like statistically that would happen anyway but i guess just mary beth seeing the woman in black Mm -hmm. And then continuing to put the glasses on and investigating more into what she's seeing. When I'm like, if I would have saw that, I would have been like, okay, I'm never putting these glasses back on. We're just going to ignore that. Yeah. But then they don't ignore it and shit gets real. She goes back to the joke shop and gets the weird eccentric guy who runs the joke shop to help them. Yeah. But he requires a lot of money to help you he's a he's a con man yeah he's a con man but i agree with you once she puts on those glasses outward appearances dark shadowy figure where you can't see the face that's creepy as shit i'm not doing that again and then and nobody else can see it but her yeah because weeds puts on the glasses and doesn't he doesn't it. see the person so that's also kind of a plot hole like what makes her special mm-hmm because he's actually the one that did the spell in the beginning to make the glasses so they could see through the dimensions or whatever. And they, they don't really explain it that much. And if there's one thing I know about this show is they are very loose and vast with their rules. <laughs> um, keep it to the bare minimal. Yeah. You don't need to know. The when they keep showing up after she throws them away or mm-hmm. sends them back to the shop, like just put them in a drawer and just 
Yeah. Never look at them again. Stomp on them. Yeah. But she let her curiosity get the best of her. <laughs> Did you have any? Uh, just, I kind of mentioned it earlier, was the trusting the con man. I get you're a kid, but you're also like 15. Yeah, and when she goes to him and asks him about it, thinking that he's an expert, Mm -hmm. even though he's running a joke shop, none of this stuff is real, technically. Mm -hmm. Or so he thinks none of it's real, but it ends up being that these things are real. But the way he, you know, tries to, oh, yeah, totally, it's totally real. But, you know, I'm going to need all this stuff. and I'm going to need 50 bucks from you. I'm going to need the powder that your boyfriend bought and... Can you not get a sense that he's, like, fucking with you? Yeah. Or, like, lying to you? <laughs> um, and she's like, yeah, this guy seems trustworthy. He seems legit. But, yeah, that's all I had, too. Yeah. It wasn't, like, a real scary story where there's a, a villain. No. Uh-uh. It's just more of a mis- mystery yeah. up until the end mm-hmm. where it gets a little dark. Yes. But do you want to move on? Yes. The next category is called, When Was This Made Again? A reminder of everything 90s, where we talk about fashion and dated references, and if there's any offensive jokes, even though this is a child's show, so there's not really a lot of offensive jokes. And we talk about the technology, if there's any. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did you think about the fashion? I thought Weed's fashion was very of the times. Yes. I loved his, it was like a plaid baseball jersey. Yes. But it was like seven sizes too big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He looked very much like something crisscross would be wearing. Okay. Because it was a jersey, it was big, but... Baggy clothing was very in in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Um, I did like his little friend that we don't have a name for. I'm sure we could find it, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, he's just wearing denim on denim on denim, which is a thing. Canadian tuxedo, baby. <laughs> and in the one scene, Mary Beth is wearing a sweet vest. Yes. With a tucked in shirt mm-hmm. and the biggest peace sign necklace yeah. I've ever seen. It was on the level of Flava Flav <laughs> size. Yeah, like, <laughs> but she rocked it. She did. I like, well, A, the x ray glasses essentially look like disco balls on the lens. Yeah. They're very cheesy, but again, they're 15. And he, uh, weeds are just rocking these things around school like they're cool Ray Bans. Yeah. It's like, yeah, check me out. Reading his Voodoo Made Easy book. <laughs> oh. Good times. Oh, and we should talk about Sardo. Yes. With his sweet Jerry Coral mullet. <laughs> and his clothes. It was like a maroon and gold. Like, it's everything you would think of that a magic person would be wearing. Yeah. With, like, the pattern. Yeah. Almost like he... Is dressed like a, a gypsy yeah. type person, mm-hmm. which that might be his heritage. Could he be. also looks like he's pretending that's his heritage, but he's really from like New Jersey. <laughs> he's Italian. I don't know. Yeah. He is a con man, so who knows? <laughs> um, did you have any dated references or offensive jokes? The only stuff that I had were just some things that were in the house and they were in Mary Beth's house. It was mainly the cabinets were a kind of a dark wood, Uh but then all the accents around the cabinets were white. Mm. So just looked like really bad 1990s interiors. Nice. You always notice things that I'm just like not even remotely noticing. I notice pointless things in the background you know legit plot points yeah that's true this which is, one's more important this is how we compliment each other <laughs> um the only thing i put in this little category was the fact that april fool's day it was such a big deal to kids mm-hmm. when as an adult you're just like eh. but there's actually, always the one person in your office that's like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do something for april fool's day for fools fools April I, Fools. I feel like uh, people do it on Facebook. There's always that one friend yeah. that has to put up the fake pregnancy notice. Or a celebrity died that didn't die. Yeah. Or Oreos coming out with taco flavored Oreos or some, uh, some stupid shit like that. But I also feel like when we were kids, every TV show had an April Fools episode. Oh, yeah. Where they were like pranking their teacher and it it kind of builds up this made-up holiday for you, yeah. and then it never lived up to my expectations. 
That's true. Like, I think I say by the bell and the way they would prank their teachers and stuff. And I was like, oh, that'll be fun when I can do that. By the time I was in high school, I'm like, I'm not going to take the time to prank a teacher. Also, they could, like, put me in detention. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah, there's repercussions. Yeah, there's repercussions <laughs> to your actions? <laughs> this is crazy. What is this? I agree, though. Like, it's so many things. And we've talked about this, like, on our movie podcast. There's just so many things that are built up by movies mm -hmm. that as a kid, you're just like, oh, man, that's going to be awesome. Like, prom night or graduation or uh, just parties in general mm -hmm. that you think they're going to be these amazing things when they're just not... They're not, no. they're not, not fun, yeah, but they're, they're not how movies depict them. Yeah. Ho the, the Hollywoodization of yeah. stuff is so much better than reality. That's true. Yeah. And April Fool's Day is also in that category, I guess. Yeah. Did you have any technology? I don't even know if you would consider it technology, but there was the usage of a magnifying glass to, by Sardo, to read over ways to reverse these instances with the glasses oh. like he has his magnifying glass out which i feel like nobody really uses maybe older people that have vision issues ryan touche i agree though it's not something i've seen people use mm -hmm. in a really long time no the only thing i really had in this category was the the musical score mm -hmm. it was very intense sometimes very computery mm -hmm. there's I don't know how to explain it. It actually sounded more like 80s music than 90s that I would like correlate with it. But it was at times it was very distracting. It was really only when she was putting on the glasses. Yeah. And they would play that music and it was just. Because it was like supposed to, which we find out later, it's it's like a parallel universe yeah. that she's transporting to. So yeah, they play that music and then they use the filter on the camera to make it kind of like like a vignette but it's like different colors yeah yeah the only thing i will say going back to the plot and the plot holes is so spoiler alert at the end of this come to find out that they had that weeds doing that spell had opened up a portal to another dimension mm -hmm. like you said and basically there's i guess their versions of them are slightly different versions of them I, but they never explain, like, do they have glasses, too? Or are they just, whenever Mary Beth pops them open, are they just seeing this girl walking around their house? Yeah. They, That's, they don't explain that. No. But at the end, the lady in black that she keeps seeing is actually, like, that Dimensions version of Sardo, but she actually knows what she's doing, and mm -hmm. she knows about the paranormal and other dimensions, and she traps Weeds, Mary Beth, and Sardo into a crystal ball yeah i felt like there's more to the story that they like this episode should have been 10 minutes longer yeah and it should have been uh mary beth weeds and sardo figuring out how to get back to their dimension or maybe just a quick couple scenes where you see everything that the other dimension was going through we only see the point of view of weeds and mary beth mm -hmm. especially mary beth seeing these just creepy People with wearing all black, but what are they seeing? Yeah. Are they seeing the same thing? We'll get to it in a second, I guess, if you want to move on. Yeah. As always, here on Ruining Our Childhood presents Are We Still Afraid of the Dark? It is award season. We give out two awards, the first of which is the Cal Mitchell Award for Exceptional Overacting. Yes. Named after the famous snick actor of the 90s Cal Mitchell. Mitchell. <laughs> in case you forgot yeah who did you give your award to i gave it to mary beth okay. i'm not gonna butcher her last name or okay. her first name or her middle name <laughs> 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 and just about the stuff she would say so when she puts on the glasses inside her house she's walking around she's seeing kind of weird things she's seeing like a kettle on the stove, which now makes sense because if she's in the other dimension, the other Mary Beth was making tea or something and yeah. had a fire on. So that makes sense now. It didn't really make sense at the time. Mm -mm. But when she looks at the fire in the glasses, she's like, oh, man. And I was like, what? It's a weird <laughs> reaction to seeing a fire in the fireplace. Yeah. Um, I don't usually see these. Yeah. And her screams were pretty 
amazing. Yeah. But my favorite part is when, after that scene, she runs over to Weeds. He's still at the basketball court with his denim friend. Mm Mm-hmm. She puts, she's trying to explain to him she sees these people and she puts the glasses on and she sees like 10 people all in black and they're just playing basketball. Mm-hmm. And she screams like they're doing something really nefarious. <laughs> like they're just playing basketball yeah. and they all look at her. But now I realize maybe in the other dimension they're not are wearing all black. Maybe that's just how she sees them because she can't fully process them or something. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, like they're just normal. And then when maybe when she pops into the dimension, they see her in all black, and it's just this girl popping up in all black, screaming, and then disappearing again. Good point. But that's why I wish they would have showed a scene, seeing from the point of view of the second dimension. Yeah. To explain a little better. Good job, Gary. <sighs> um, he made but, sure he told us that he could see his girlfriend through his x-ray glasses, but doesn't right. tell us half the story's plot. Yes. Gary, you son of a bitch. Your story's basic, Gary. No. Um, um, who did you give your award to? I gave mine to Sardo. Okay. Played by Richard Dumont. And I thought the very idea of overacting was this guy. Yeah. Like, everything he does is over the top and cheesiness. Like, when Weed sees the x-ray glasses for the first time, he's like, I've sold hundreds of those. No, thousands of those. They're one of my best sellers. And usually I feel like the adult is the person that brings some, not realism, but credibility to the episode. Yeah. Except for that first episode. Yes. But usually it's the adult actor brings the yeah. credibility to th- not this episode. He was terrible. Okay. All right. All right. You, okay. you gave him your best, didn't you? <laughs> ah, you son of a bitch. Uh, well, we can just move on to uh-huh. the Keenan Thompson Award for just doing be- the best. Under the circumstances. It's been a minute since I've had to say that. Mm -hmm. And I did give it to Richard M. (laughs) Dumont as Sardo. I could just tell you were being so quiet. No, because I saw him as being extra because that's he's a con man. So he's trying to sell that he's this mystic being. Okay. And I just thought he was pretty entertaining while he was being a little extra. I think my favorite part was... When they are doing, I guess, the seance or they're trying to connect with the other dimension. At the very end, the lady in black, her eyes are really big and that's all they see. Mm -hmm. And he goes on the table and he's like, take the children. (laughs) I just thought that was hilarious. (laughs) And then when he's in the middle of doing the seance and he's like just repeating the spell. And obviously, uh, Weeds gets the sense that this guy is a fraud Mm -hmm. and he doesn't believe anything he's doing is correct. But... Mary Beth's like, don't you need the dust? He's like, the what? Like, <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I just thought he was entertaining. But I get what you're saying. I know you don't particularly like the overacting, which comes quite often in this type of show. Yes. Who did you give yours to? The I denim did. on denim? <laughs> <laughs> I gave mine to Eugene Bird. Okay. Uh, as Weeds. I thought for a kid actor, he was pretty decent and carries... They kind of split it off. I shouldn't say he carries the whole episode because there's a lot that focuses on Mary Beth. Yeah. Who, I agree, was a bit of an over-actor. I just like the -the over-the-topness of his character with, like, reading his book about how to do voodoo made easy. And just, he wasn't bad. Yeah. Yeah. He did the best under the circumstances. That's very true. Yeah. I felt like he should have been in more of the plot. Yeah. Because I felt like it was a little separated at the beginning. The title of the sh- the episode is The Tale of the Super Specs. Mm-hmm. But you have this person that kind of seems like he's supposed to be the main character. And he has really nothing to do with the glasses. He's over on his own playing with a voodoo powder. And his girlfriend is the one that's dealing with these like other dimensional beings kind of haunting her. So that didn't make sense to me, but yeah. I, I did like the point you brought up earlier about him possibly poisoning his friend by putting this crap in her yogurt. Because <laughs> even if it's just fake powder, it's not going to be good. Yeah, good for children to consume it. No, and he put a lot of it in there, <laughs> yes. and the amount he put on the basketball yeah. was it? I'm like, bro, calm down with the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's it's funny because I'm thinking it's just like Sardo's cocaine that he's like he left out and he's like oh yeah that's magic powder yeah uh, totally like, just yeah magic powder I, I saw some cops hanging out outside I better get rid of that <laughs> oh, good times so we can move on to mm-hmm. our final thoughts and deciding if we give this a enthusiastic Betty Ann thumbs up or a reluctant Eric. Shout out to Glenn from Letterkenny's thumbs up. Yes. And if uh, if you need some reminding, because it's been a minute, we mm-hmm. named our cat, or I guess our thumbs ups after Betty Ann and Eric, who are part of the Midnight Society, because in the first episode, Betty Ann's thumbs up is probably the best thumbs up I've ever seen. And Eric's is just, you know, he, he needs a little more convincing on the story, you know? Yeah. Wasn't it uh, whether or not they should induct a new member? Yes. Yes. We need to put that thumbs up back up on the Instagram so you guys can reference it. It's, yeah. It's in the back, but uh, Ashley will be nice, I'm sure, and put it, repost it. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I also liked Kiki's thumbs up, mm-hmm. but Betty Ann's was... Betty Ann's is the best thumbs up I've ever seen. <laughs> it ranks up there with... The one that the guy does on Community. The guy? The guy. Oh. Uh, and then Troy does it, okay. too. It's like on their 1990s, like, come to Greendale video. Yeah. And it's like this. Well, when mm-hmm. you said the guy, I was just like, Troy Barnes, <laughs> our favorite character ever. Ever. But I was thinking of the guy with the sweatband and that he, shorts. Yes. He does it first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Yes. I digress. Anyway. <laughs> So what it, what would you give this episode? The entire episode for me was heading towards a very reluctant Eric thumbs up. Mm-hmm. I thought it was kind of cheesy until the very end where Weeds and Mary Beth and Sardo are now trapped in a crystal ball in this other universe or dimension now is a real thing. Yeah. I was like, well, that's a curveball. And it moved to the enthusiastic Betty Ann for me. I agree. It did have the elements of what I remember as a kid with Are You Afraid of the Dark is that creepy ending. Yeah. Where you're just like left with the what the hell. But I do wish again, like that they would have explained a little more of the second dimension, like what they saw. Because they have like the doppelgangers. They looked like slightly like Mary Beth and Weeds. Yeah. I just want to know what their journeys were like. I say cut that scene with Gary and Kristen at the joke shop all together, throw in a scene explaining this other dimension a little bit more. Yeah. And shout out to Gary, though. He did get the group back for saying his story wasn't scary because he had one of the kids call in sick, I'm Mm -hmm. using air quotes, and when he gives them all glasses from his dad's joke shop, they put them on, and the kid that doesn't show up in the beginning is dressed all in black, so they all freak out. And they run away. Which is good to have your friends run past a campfire. Yeah. (laughs) But then I like when him, Kristen, uh, Gary, Kristen, and the friend that showed up to scare everyone. I want to say David, but I could be wrong. But it's just when they all, like, kind of shook hands. And it was this real awkward, (laughs) real awkward handshake. Uh, 90s. (sighs) That's good. Yeah. So we both agree. Betty Ann, thumbs up. Boom. Thank you for listening, guys. Hey, if you aren't aware of our other podcast, Ruining Our Childhood, where we rewatch 90s and 2000s movies. Yes. Um, We also have a cool membership club Mm -hmm. called The Ruiners Club. Yes. You should head over to our website, ruiningourchildhood.com, and join that club. Yeah. It's free to join, and we're putting out exclusive episodes we'll be putting out some exclusive tv episodes at this point by the time this premieres yes we should have one out already yeah so we um in our exclusive episodes we rewatch our favorite movies and just talk about them Mm -hmm. ones that we wouldn't normally do for a podcast that we think are perfectly perfect (laughs) perfectly perfect perfectly perfect and uh but we also just started some new minisodes that are exclusive to the Ruiners Club, where we rewatch some of our favorite 90s and 2000s shows, TV yes. shows, and we discuss them just in a loose format. We just talk about what we like, what we don't like, and that will be a thing we're doing forward. Yeah. <laughs> Ongoing. Ongoing. Yes. 
so definitely check out ruiningourchildhood.com to sign up for our fan club to get access to those episodes as well as other things like giveaways. We just did a giveaway. It was amazing. Gave away a sweet t-shirt. Yeah. And you missed it because you didn't join. But then also you can follow us over on our Instagram at Ruining Our Childhood and on Facebook at Ruining Our Childhood as well. And also on Twitter at ROC Movie Podcast. Oh, show. And we hope you enjoyed this brand new episode Mm -hmm. of Are We Still Afraid of the Dark? Question. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye.